Hey, welcome back everybody. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at doing some air-to-air -air gunnery with the P-51 Mustang, both against bombers and other fighters. Now, the P-51 was an excellent fighter, combining excellent maneuverability with a really good firepower, packing three Browning M2 50 caliber machine guns in each wing. And while they may not have the punch of a 20 millimeter cannon like the Spitfire or the uh, FW-190 packs, uh, they do make up for it by being able to carry a lot of ammunition, a good variety of it, and rate of fire. Now before we get too far into the controls and actually gunnery, we need to look at how the P-51 Mustang is set up. Because as you can see here, we have a central gun sight but our machine guns are located out on the wings. So we need to talk about convergence for a minute. So the P-51 in DCS is set up just like it would be back in 1944 following Air, uh, US Army Air Corps publications such as this one that's on the screen. As you can see here, we got a couple of different charts to look at, both a side view showing trajectories of all six machine guns and how they should be set up because uh, the ground crew could set the, not only the vertical angle, but also the horizontal angle of each machine gun so that they could meet uh, this document, this, this specification that the Ar Army Air Corps specified. So the side view is a good look at the trajectories of all the bullets. And you can see that they have a nice uh, spread as they uh, fly through the air out to 2,000 feet. More importantly is the top-down view, which is the second one down. Now, as you can see here, they start out wide and then they converge at a certain distance. And then they start to diverge again after that, making an X, uh, a pattern like the letter X. Of note here is in between 1,000 and 1,200 feet. This is where the bullets from the left wing uh, crisscross with the bullets from the right wing and they have a very concentrated fire right there in front of the aircraft and it's almost right at 1100 feet that is very important in DCS you are not able to set the conversions yourself this is what we're limited to right here publication that Eagle Dynamics followed and this is what we have so having this is a very good piece of information because this plays a big part in setting up our k-14 gun sight in the cockpit which we'll get to here momentarily uh, the other two views down towards the bottom half of the page uh, show the different bullet drops and how they look at the different ranges and how tight they are and how they spread apart and you can see they they spread apart when they first fired and they, cl and they cluster in tighter and tighter and then they start spreading apart again where they diverge. And then you can see that in a 60 degree 2G banking turn how the bullets would fly as well. Alright, so back in the cockpit here and there we have the K-14 guns, uh, gyro stabilized gun sight right here in front of us. Uh, major items that we need to look at is the combiner glass, which is what we look through. Uh, we have this arch right here that's marked off with a bunch of numbers. This is how we set in our target's wingspan. Off to the left, you got this dial. This is the range dial. This is how we tell the K-14 gun sight to uh, compute for a specific range. Right above that is this masking lever, and I'll demonstrate what that does uh, once we turn the gun sight on. Alright, other controls is you have... The throttle handle is set up kind of like a motorcycle throttle. So as you twist this, it pulls on this cable, which pulls up on uh, the range dial. It'll actually uh, increase or decrease the range dial just by simply twisting the throttle grip. Other controls you have are just underneath the glare shield on the left-hand side. And you got a couple of switches here. Uh, this switch right here in the middle will actually turn the gun sight on. And then you have the mode select switch. You have fixed, fixed plus gyro, and gyro stabilized. And then this bottom one will adjust the brightness of the uh, optics on the gun sight itself. All right, so we have that turned on. And we're in the fixed mode. And we look through the glass, and we see nothing. How do we turn it on now? Well, 
Now we gotta look down on our armament panel and find the guns and guns camera switch. And if we toggle it down to camera only, we get the sight, but we won't get any machine guns. If you want both the sight and guns, you have to turn the toggle switch to the up position. So now we have the gun sight plus the guns. Alright, so this is the fixed sight, and this is very useful for air-to-ground work, and I will cover that in a future video. Uh, that'll be the next follow-on P-51 video I do. But today's focus is going to be on air-to-air -air gunnery. Now that masking lever I told you about on the left-hand side will obscure a lot of this... a lot of the optics except for the bore sight cross. That bore sight cross is the center line of your aircraft and it does not move. It's part of the fixed sight. Alright, next mode of operation is fixed and gyro. Which will combine both the gyro stabilized air to air sight and the fixed ground attack sight. Uh, one of the things I like to do personally is I will run it in fixed and gyro and flip the masking lever down so I have both the gyro stabilized sight plus my uh, aircraft's bore sight line. So that way I have both so I can... Uh, it helps me calculate uh, uh, deflection shots, which is, uh, which is handy. Or we can flip it to gyro only, and now we have gyro stabilize the optic. As you can see here, we have a pipper in the middle, surrounded by a ring of six diamonds. Now those diamonds are important for helping calculate, uh, for helping frame a, a target aircraft into the site so we can uh, shoot and hopefully shoot them down. Now that is controlled exclusively by two things. Your range knob on the left side of the gun sight and the target wingspan adjustments. Now if you remember that chart from earlier, our guns converge between 1,000 feet and 1,200 feet. And ideally, they crisscross right at 1,100. So what we want to do is adjust the range to 1,100. Yeah, about right there. And you notice our diamond pattern expanded outward and got bigger. That's entirely normal. So the big, I, the big takeaway with the gun sight is you want to frame you want to put the target aircraft inside this circle of diamonds. And I'll put a circle on screen. What you want to do is you want to put your target aircraft inside that circle so that its wingtips are just touching that circle. That's how you know you're at the ideal range of 1100 feet. Well, to go with that, we need to know the target's wingspan. So that's where the arc, the wingspan adjustment comes in. If you know your target's wingspan, you can dial it in here. And you can see it adjusts that circle of diamonds ever so bigger. And it's a different adjustment inside the K-14 gun sight. A lot of different technical stuff happening inside there. The big thing is we want to dial in our, we want to set the, the range to 1100 and leave that there. You, know, you don't really mess with that too much. But we do want to adjust for our target's wingspan. And here on screen I have a bunch of uh, different wingspans for uh, a lot of the DCS aircraft, both uh, AI and human flown, that are able to be shot down or engaged by your, uh, by your guns. Alright, I'm going to take our off active pause and I'll demonstrate what this looks like. So if you notice, the gun sight actually moves around. It's gyro stabilized, but it's also ca calculating and factoring in our rate of turn for a, for a deflection shot. See, I pull a tighter turn, it falls back a little bit. So this is, this is a tremendous help over a fixed gun sight, like some of the older aircraft have, or the, say the uh, Spitfire, the BF-109, or the uh, FW-190. They only have fixed sights. Now the the FW one ninety D nine is an exception. That has a German version of a gyro stabilized gun sight. But 
Uh, the P-51 and the P-47 both share the K-14 gun sight. Actually, the F-86 does as well for DCS. Alright. One other thing I gotta talk about with uh, gunnery, and this also applies for air to ground, is if you notice my turn and bank coordinator there at the instrument panel, you notice I got a little bit of right side slip. That will affect the aim of your guns. Uh, here, looking top down, this is if you are trimmed up for straight and level flight, everything's nice in trim, you're not slipping or skidding through the air. However, if you do have a little bit of side slip, you're still maintaining a forward flight you're not going to be pointed exactly in the right direction that you may think you're flying. So that's something you gotta look for, uh, look for and, and account for whenever you're trying to get guns or, or rockets especially on target. So what we want to do is rudder that out or even some rudder trim to help you out if you know you're gonna be at a specific speed for a little bit. The better you can maintain uh, coordinated flight the better your uh, the better chances you are to have guns hits all right so with that out of the way let's go engage a bomber and let's see how this looks in action all right so now i'm rolling up behind a junkers 88 it's a german medium bomber i have my gun sight set for 1100 uh 1100 feet and with a target wingspan of 65 feet which is uh ju 88's uh wingspan so right about there. So if you look, I have the the bomber framed nicely with my gun sight. I'm a little off to the left, but that's okay. Um, so right now, this is I'm at the ideal range in order to open up and expect hits. So put your ideally you want to put your pipper on the target, stabilize for a moment, and then squeeze the trigger and give them a good burst. And come off target. Nice. That was a good burst. Lit his left wing on fire. Now, approaching him like I did is... is yeah, I almost hate to say, but that's that's a classic rookie mistake. Uh, for a number of reasons. One, it, it, it gives the gunners on the bombers a good, a good shot back at you while you're trying to close in and get a good guns... Uh, get good gun range on them. Tactically... The bombers are on their way to wherever they're, they are headed to go drop their ordnance and uh, return to their base. So they're on a specific path. They, they're not going to deviate from that very well. Uh, the second, you're in a fighter and far more faster and maneuverable. So what you want to do is just kind of dance around them. Uh, always changing heading, changing course, coming in. You don't want to settle in in any one given spot. That gives their gunners a good, solid chance to, uh, to gun you uh, right back. What's this one thing you want to avoid? Let's go look at uh, how a, a different engagement would look uh, under better circumstances. And I'm by no means an expert at doing this. It's just things I've picked up, things I've learned, and things I'd like to pass along so you guys can fulfill your mission, shoot down the enemy bombers and make it back to base instead of them shooting you down, you not getting any, uh, getting any kills.
Alright, now we're in a fight with, against a fighter. We got a FW-190 D9, I believe, in this case. So now we're gonna test out uh, the K-14 gun sight against another fighter. So, I'm gonna switch mine to fixed and gyro, mass down. I already have my range set to 1100 as before. The D9's wingspan is about 35 feet, so I got that dialed in as well. So I see my boresight cross, so I get a good, uh, good idea of my vector, and I'm trying to line up my gun sight. And trying to connect the dots. And this is where some deflection comes in. You notice I'm, I got them framed nicely, but I may miss. See, all my rounds are falling behind, so I want to lead a little bit. There's some hits. So, you may... The k 14 is great. It definitely helps give you a good idea of where your shots are going to fall, but it's not perfect. But it does help you out tremendously. There's some good hits. Nice burst. You, you don't want to hold down the trigger and waste all your bullets. Oh, that missed. So now I want to close in a little bit. I can uh, throttle up to uh, military power. There we go, closing that distance a little bit. Looking good, looking good. piece there. Ah, oh, splash one. Awesome. Alright, let's get back into max continuous. There it goes. Good fight. Nice. Alright everybody, uh, that's the basics of aerial gunnery. Hopefully this video helps you out, especially for those new to Warbirds. As I've said before, these things uh, can be a handful to fly, especially if you're new to them. However, you learn them, you get good with them, and it's a tremendous amount of satisfaction and accomplishment as you improve and uh, master a warbird they're an awful lot of fun like i said i love them and nothing quite like it to fly these uh these older aircraft compared to the modern stuff all right so you guys could look forward to air to ground gunnery and weapons employment in the next p51 video i do so until then thanks for watching and we'll see you next time